Welcome back to our third episode of Dragon Warrior Weekly. Today we're going to continue where we left off last time with some basics, maybe some takedowns and applications. We want to thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy the program. I'm Sifu Donald Kinney. Sifu is the Chinese term for teacher. It's the one we use in Chinese martial arts and Kung Fu. I'm going to continue with uh, the same idea that I started with, which is the animal qigong, and then I'm going to get into some practical applications. Okay, so the one I want to add today is snake wraps the tree. This one's a little bit more difficult than the previous ones that I've shown. What we're going to do is start with one hand on the hip. It can be hanging free at the side, it can be here on guard in the middle, it doesn't really matter. The idea is we're going to focus on one hand at a time. Okay, we're going to go up behind the ear, like we're reaching behind our head, and then reach around. See how my pinky's up? Like I'm grabbing something behind me, and then circle the hand back through my armpit, right, and then we'll start the whole thing again. Right. Now if I just stand here upright, I'm going to be getting all the rotation in the shoulder. Another way to work it is to move from the waist. All right. So I can lean with it. And once you get the hang of that, then you'll reverse it. So you go back under the armpit. And reach with the back of the hand, pinky up, come around your head, and down behind your ear. Okay, now let's try that on the other side. First direction. And switch and go the opposite direction. All right, now let me show you a way to uh, make this exercise more interesting and more of a workout. Okay, you get yourself a weighted ball like this. I'm not sure what this weighs, maybe three pounds or five pounds, something like that. You can do whatever weight you're going to be comfortable with because more repetitions is better in my opinion on this type of exercise. So basically, I'm going to do it with the weight and I'm going to try to not grip the ball and hold it like that, but to leave it kind of balanced in my hand. Alright, and back the other way. And this is actually originally an old wrestling exercise from Shuai Jiao, which is uh, kind of like the, the Chinese or Asian equivalent of uh, pancreation. It's like an ancient form of wrestling. A lot of the Kung Fu is, is actually built off of the techniques from Shuai Jiao. And another way to build on this is you can hold a cup of water and try not to spill it. So that's snake wraps a tree. You are about to be violated. All right. So uh, in the snake style, there's a couple different specific methods. There's viper, which is striking, and that's what you usually see in the old kung fu movies when they're doing the pss, 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 pss type stuff. And then there's uh, 
python or constricting snake, snake, which is more like what you see in the UFC where you're getting people in the rear naked choke and stuff like that, squeezing them, right? All right, so this is gonna be more moving into the constricting uh, type of techniques where, you know, let's say he's got an attack or a grab. I can start with a strike or a check and then move into a, a constriction. Hamstring, okay. <laughs> I got an injured partner here. All right, and so you can also do it with the arm, right? And this turns into different locks, stuff like that, variation on the hammer lock, or... That should feel good, it's a nice stretch. Yeah. <laughs> right, so it's all these same type of movements. The other idea is, let's say he's going by me, Right? So then I want to bring him back around. Right? Very simple type of stuff. Right? I can go from an outside block right into a rear naked choke. Alright. Another one would be for a takedown. Which similar to what I showed last time where we're doing the leopard, right? And we're striking. In this situation, right, I showed the leopard going over top, striking. It could also be low, like this, and I can shift into an arm break over the shoulder if he were taller, right? But let's say I'm doing the snake, I'm gonna do the same type of thing. Okay, so those are some ideas on snake, and there's no limit, uh, like I may have already said, and I'll probably say a bunch more times, in Chinese martial arts, the expression is, one move is 100 moves, right? So it's all about really working and practicing those moves, and then thinking about them, studying them, analyzing them, in terms of how they can be used in actual fighting situations, and then of course drilling those with a partner if you're concerned about uh, developing the fighting aspect of the martial arts. Or if you just want it for health, then it's the same thing. You want to repeat the movement as many times as possible with as good a body posture and structure and alignment as possible so that you're really staying healthy and fit. We will be back after these messages. All right, I'm assistant instructor Robbie Page, and today I'm going to demonstrate uh, some exercises you do to use the movements in those exercises for what I'm going to show you today with the uh, uh, gator roll, um, the offensive and the defensive way to use that move, um, an escape from double leg takedown, and then I'm going to show you how to sprawl and take the back and turn it into a rear naked choke. Um, Holden is going to help me demonstrate some exercises that if you're going to do these these types of moves and escape, um, these exercises will help you be quicker at it and kind of like give you that uh, memory, what do they call it, muscle memory. So your body will be used to doing stuff like this. And the first one would be the crab walk. So when you're trying to, when you get taken down, you can crab walk and get back up real quick. So the person doesn't take the top mount on you or a side mount because you're back on your feet. So what crab walk is, is you're just holding yourself up and you're gonna walk forward. You're gonna walk backwards a few times. You can. Speed it up, you know, go side to side. And this really strengthens your triceps, your forearms, and it also works those calf muscles because you're basically walking on your heels. So that's the first one. The reason why you're working on the crab walk is 
to escape a double leg takedown before they get a top mount or side mount, you're gonna crab walk up to get back to your feet and you should be able to do that before the person trying to take you down gets back to their feet and then you have a strike. So that's what we're gonna demonstrate. Donald's gonna go double leg take me down. And when he does that, Go ahead, and, go, ahead and take, go ahead and take my legs. All right, so, double leg takedown. Bam. Let's do it again. Let's start good. back this way. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, so double leg takedown. Takes you down. I got you with the knee. <laughs> but yeah, so you want to be quick on that because the guy's trying to mount you. So even if he does get you and you keep going, here you are. And now another one, so when you get taken down, you shoot in and somebody's on top to get out of that would be, you're gonna come forward and get back up. So you're here. You're gonna step forward and get up. One more time. Here, this leg comes forward. Turn your body right back up. And it'll help you do what I'm getting ready to show you with uh, Donald. Thank you, Holden. If Donald's the aggressor shooting in on me, trying to take me down, my, my first instinct should be to step back and drop my weight on his shoulders that way he goes flat to the ground and when i do this i don't have control yet so what the gator roll does is when i roll with him i sink in that choke and now he's not getting up one more time all right so he shoots in, and then I, you can roll either way, but you gotta use your body weight to shift. Once you roll, you sink that in. Now, if it was reversed and I was the aggressor, and I'm shooting in, and he sprawls me, all right, so now he's got me with his left arm, Right, so if he's here, I'm hooking this arm here. Right, if he was on this side with the choke, I'm hooking this arm. All right, but either way, what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll, crack, and now you have a reversed arm bar right here. Okay, I'm shooting in, boom. Before he rolls, I'm rolling. Now I have control of this arm right now, but I'm gonna make sure I do when I drop this elbow across the bridge of his nose. Then I have control of this arm. So arm bar or you know, your preference. <laughs> because once you're in this position, you're in control. All right, last one. All right, so he shoots in. I'm gonna sprawl, but instead of dropping, I'm pushing down and getting behind him. I'm, just, I'm getting here, but I'm, I'm pushing down so I can get around him. Hook the legs and then roll. Boom. Boom. And that movement is right here. So when you come down and you're ro rolling with them to sink in that rear naked. Same way with the gator roll. That momentum helps you squeeze it in tighter. Here 
and you're rolling, sinking it in. Boom. If you're reversing it from the person sprawling you, you're hooking it this way and rolling to this. This here gives you control of the arm. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll be back right after these messages with Dragon Warrior Weekly. All right, I'm Jesse Kirby, owner and head instructor of Elite Martial Arts MMA here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Today I have my son Holden with us and we're gonna do some more kicks, a little bit more advanced kicks than we did last time. Uh, the first kick we're gonna do is called a hook kick. You're gonna put your left foot in front or whichever foot you wanna kick with, you're gonna put in the back. So from here, you're gonna pivot like we did the other day with that round kick from here. Bring this knee past, looks just like a round kick from here, but then we're gonna go up and across and you're gonna hook it back to you and then bring it back behind you. All right, so a couple more times slow. Pivot, bring it up, hook, bring it back, put it down. All right, ready? One more time slow, pivot, bring it up, around. It's, it's good to not just go like this and just bring it up as high as you can. If you can only do it waist high, then do it waist high. But from here, pivot, bring it up, in, and come back. Are you ready? All right, here. Go. Go. Hands up. Go. One more. Go. All right, now try it a couple times with your left or your right if this is your bad leg. So from here, pivot, bring it up, and come back. All right, ready? Hands up, go. Go. One more, go. Good. All right, now, a spin hook kick. So it's the same hook kick. We're just gonna add a spin to it. So we're gonna use back foot. We're gonna pivot. This way, look over your right shoulder, bring your leg up. You're gonna bring your leg out and it's gonna do that same motion here and keep pivoting until it comes back. All right, so from here, pivot, look, bring it out and come back. Ready? Try to keep your balance straight. Don't put your foot, like it's, at first you're gonna to wanna to do that and then put your foot where it goes. But eventually you want to put your foot where you want it to go. Ready? Go. Ah! All right, take your time in between each one. Ready? Go. Ah! One more on this leg. Ready? Hands are up. Go. Ah! Ready, switch sides. Ooh. This one gonna be ugly. You don't know. All right, ready? Put it that way. So now since we got this foot in front, you have to pivot this way, look over your left shoulder, bring it up and around. Ready? Hands up? No. no. Hands up. Go. Okay. One more. Go. Oh, good. All right, now we're gonna do sword kick. All right, so sword kick, it's also called inside crescent kick or into out crescent kick. But a sword kick is going to come in this way and then out that way. So you're actually going to hit with the top of your foot. But to do that, you're going to turn your ankle in so that your foot's like this when it comes across. So it's like you're slapping over the top of your foot. Put your hands up. See right here. Pivot. Bring it in. Oh, I'm gonna cross. It's like, boom, with your foot. All right, one more, ready? Hands up. Pivot. Oh, I'm gonna cross. All right, so, towards the camera, here. Turn. End up. All right, ready? Hands are up. Pivot, bring your leg up. Snap it up as high as you can. 
then bring it back. Make sure your ankle's turned in. So from here, all right, ready? Go. Hands up. Go. Go. Uh, one way you can see about getting the height is if you put your back hand out like this. So if you're like this, put your back hand out, the same leg that's kicking. You're gonna try to slap your hand with the top of your foot. So from here, like that. If it makes that sound, that means you hit with the top of your foot. If it makes a sound like this, that means you hit with the side of it. So you wanna try to hit with the top of it. So from here, ready? Don't scream, just hold your hand out and try to slap your hand and see what it makes. Go. Ready, hands up. Go. One more, real high. Go. Oh, switch. Hands are up, ready? Go. Just put your hands up. Go. One more, go. All right, now we're gonna do two more kicks. One is the basic kick, and then we're gonna to add to that one. So the first one is a moon kick, which is like the opposite of the sword kick. Sword kick was in to out, this one's out to in. So from here, still gonna pivot, but this time your foot comes up, and then you're gonna put it down on this side. All right, so from here for sparring, hands are up. I'm going to go from here, like that. So if his hands were up, like this, up, this will be a good one. It can either go to the face or it can knock his hands down like that. And then I can double kick. Or it could just go to the face if his hands are out farther. From here. Like that. Comb his hair for him. All right, ready? Hands are up. Yeah. <laughs> ready? Go. Hands up. Ready? Go. Pivot on that foot, bring it over, ready, go. There you go. One more, go. Thanks for your help, Holden. Get out of here. <laughs> We're gonna add a moon jump moon kick. So from here, you're gonna do that same moon kick. Boom, here. You're gonna turn, pick your other leg up so it didn't kick. This one that you're standing on is going to do that same moon kick. So from here, jump, and set it down. It looks hard at first, but it's not bad. So from here, moon, here. At first, you can take this foot and step, and then kick. So that would be a moon, spin moon kick. So from here, one, step, kick. But we're going to do a jump moon. So from here, hands are up. One, jump, two, two more. Ready, go. One, two, last one, go. All right, hold them. Quick. All right, face this. Feet together. Thank you very much. Yeah.